Hi, good morning. So, I have put on one of my, I must say, one of my cuter workout outfits that I've ever had. It's very put together for me. And I'm going to have a small workout. I'm uploading some videos, getting caught up on um, some of my favorite YouTubers. So this I pretty much exclusively use for deadlifts. I think that's about 70 pounds. It's Levi's thing. He does other stuff with it, but I just use it for deadlifts. I have some extra weights over there that I add on to my little um, dumbbells right there. I have a 15 pounder that somebody gave me. I have a 25 pound plate. You'll see how I use that in a minute. And then we have a 12 pound medicine ball and some extra weights in there as well. We do have a little weight bench. I pretty much only use it for like chest press and then doing tricep dips and um, some other moves that I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they're called. And then we have the um, Bowflex tower that you can use for pull-ups. Um, I am only capable of doing about two pull-ups in a row at the moment. And I'm, I have to admit, I'm not trying very hard to improve that. And then the dips, which are also pretty difficult for me, but I do figure out ways to use them. I'm just gonna do a good overall workout, do some arms, some legs. It's kind of hard for me to get motivated when I'm not in the gym, but that's fine. I keep my gains. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a little bit of light stretching. This one to open up my chest. Get all my ribs in the right place. And then over here, we're gonna stretch out. Oh, a little back bend, and then to the side. So, while we're doing this, I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, the fact that I made this video. And I made this video, and I loaded it onto my computer, and then I watched part of it, and then I deleted this video. Because in this video, you are going to see essentially all of the things about myself that I have hated over the years and even though I've gotten to a place in my life now where I can accept my body for exactly what it looks like and just be so incredibly happy that it's strong and functional I still see those things about myself and it still makes me feel really uncomfortable and really vulnerable to share those things you know, with, with this audience, with a wide audience where anyone can watch this and judge me. And I remember being such a young, judgmental little bitch where I would look at other people's bodies and think, my God, why is she bending over like that? You can see her stomach pudge. But I want to be really truthful about my body and what it looks like and how it functions and what happens when I bend over. <laughs> because this happens to essentially everyone. So, okay, quickly I want to talk about what kind of weights I'm lifting. I have between 6 and 8 pounds on those dumbbells. Um, you can see it's not very heavy, but I do struggle with this, um, with this type of lifting. And when you're doing specifically this move, you want to be really careful because this is a great way to tear your uh, supraspinatus tendon, which is part of your rotator cuff, and it does not heal up very well. So, be very cautious when you're lifting like that. Now here you see I have a 25 pound plate, I am now doing some squats, and even just like a year, year and a half ago, doing just body weight squats um, down that low was next to impossible for me. So it has been a long year and a half of gaining strength slowly, and now like this, this weight with squats is good for me because I have um, my hips are a little bit out and one rotates slightly forward. So every time I squat down low, one of my knees medially rotates and it, it makes me feel pretty unstable and it hurts my knee a little bit. So I keep my squats pretty lightweight. So just remember it's all about finding what works for your body and working from there. You don't have to conform yourself to someone else's training standards. Okay, so here I really started um, questioning why I did this without a shirt, but you can see I have the 25 pound plate on the outside of my thigh and then I am lifting it up as if I am a dog that's going to pee on a fire hydrant. And this helps to build up your glute medius and minimus, and those are the glutes that are under your glute maximus that give you a nice full round bottom up into your lower back area which is what we've talked about before, that lower back ass that I just love. 
These muscles are also responsible for your thigh brow, I think it's called, which is just the silliest thing I've ever heard. <sighs> okay, and we're doing it on the other side. I'm still questioning why I decided to do this without a shirt on. I think I've come to the conclusion that either the camera adds 55 pounds or my mirror makes me look skinnier than I actually am. Okay, doing a quick stretch out. Enjoy the view of my back knee. Yes, it still happens. And then going back for another round with the arms. You can see here I'm not going um, straight, straight up and down with the straight abduction, so I'm using my back muscles a little bit more, building up the traps, the lats, the rhomboids, and then here I'm doing straight abduction. Again, working the deltoids and the uh, supraspinatus, which is a very vulnerable muscle, so you do not want to lift heavy with these weights. Don't push yourself farther than you can actually lift. Form is more important than strength. And you can see it looks like my elbows are bent. They are bent a little bit. I also have quite an intense carrier's angle. You can look that up if you want to know more. Okay, so now I'm doing triceps. And what I have there is a 15 pound weight, and I'm using that with both arms, so it's not particularly heavy. But I, <laughs> I do admit, I hate doing triceps. As, as, as the muscle gets fatigued, I get this like horribly uncomfortable tingle sensation all over my freaking body, especially in my legs, and I just hate it. I just hate it. But I do it anyway. Okay, so now I have set myself up for deadlifts. And I am also officially contemplating liposuction. <laughs> like, I love my body. I see my body. I look at my body right now and I'm like, damn girl, you got some good legs and some good arms. And then I look at that, you know, kangaroo pouch little fat blob on the front of my stomach and it's never going to go away. And I just take a deep breath in and deep breath out and I say, that's who I am. And I love me. And that is literally how body acceptance works. Okay, so now I'm going to use the dip bar. I'm going to lower myself down, and then without, like, launching myself off the ground with my leg, I'm trying to use the full strength in my arms. I'm going to come up and then just jetting that uh, leg out behind me, working the butt. It's a good um, lower body and upper body exercise at the same time. And obviously, like, the erector muscles in your back get a really good workout with this one, too. And again, so I don't fatigue my shoulders and rotator cuff too much, I'm probably not going to do too many reps here. Just enough to feel a good burn. And done. Okay, so now you can see here I am not leaning on anything in the front, so I'm doing that because I want to get the erector muscles and other deep muscles in, of my back um, really engaged in this workout. Um, when I'm in the gym, I would use one of the pulley machines to attach weights to that leg that I'm lifting up in the air, and that does make it harder, but you can get a pretty equally as awesome workout from just doing this freestanding. So you'll see when I lift my foot backwards, it is slightly sideways, so that means that I do have a little bit of external rotation in my leg. That's okay, but you do want to try to focus on limiting that external rotation. You can do it both ways, where like your leg externally rotates and then one hip kind of stacks on top of the other a little bit, but I want to keep mine as stable as possible simply so I get more stabilizing exercise and really work the muscles in my back as well. And since I'm already targeting the glute minimus and glute medius with the 25-pound uh, weight plate that I put on the side of my leg and lift, I don't have to worry about them as much in this type of exercise. I really want to focus more on the uh, glute max. Okay, so now we're doing just short pulses, really feeling a little bit of a burn in my butt.
and other side of course and then when you're done I like to do just a quick little stretch out to keep my low back from getting too tight then we move into some more weighted squats so when you squat down, I keep my feet a little bit wider than shoulders width and then I track my knees out over my feet. You can't see it, but my heels stay on the ground, butt sticks straight back behind you like you're going to sit in a chair. And I like to carry my weights in the front instead of putting it on my back, simply because it helps me feel a little bit more stable. And keep in mind that you don't need actual weights to do this type of exercise. I mean, you could get like two gallons of water and just hold it and do the same thing, and you'd get a little bit more weight. Oh, look at my sweaty tummy. Well, at least that's a flattering angle for my stomach. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Some more tricep work. And here, you're going to see, I'm getting uncomfortable, so I'm moving around. <laughs> but here you're going to see the giant shoulder girdle that has plagued my desires for tiny feminine shoulders my whole life but hey it's strong it helps me do my work plants banana trees okay all done with that now we're back to deadlifts and contemplating lots of liposuction oh my god yeah so again when you're trying to accept yourself and like you know, say you take a video of yourself, or say someone takes a picture of you and they post it, and you just look nothing like you imagined or hoped you would look. You literally have to just look at it and say, hey, I accept you anyway. I love you anyway. It is what it is. And that feels small. Like, it feels insignificant to just say those words. But I swear to God, it's potent. I also want to add here, while we're talking about deadlifts, that as I go down, you'll see that my back is totally flat. There is no curve in my lumbar spine, and that is going to keep me from getting herniated and ruptured discs. So when you're doing deadlifts, you need to be really, really careful about keeping the integrity in your back. It's all about lifting with your butt and legs. Okay, now we're doing one last round of abduction. And you can see it's hurting me. I mean, it doesn't hurt. If it hurts, I stop doing it. It's just challenging. If things hurt when you're lifting weights, you need to stop doing them, do them differently, ask someone like a personal trainer to critique your form, because if it hurts, you're gonna rip something. Okay? Alright, I added um, 10 pounds to the dumbbells, so the package says that they're technically 20 pounds now. Um, so I'm doing some bicep curls, and you can see that I am totally cheating by flaring my elbows out. But as I come down, you might be able to see I do have quite a severe carrier's angle. That means that when I hold my arms down by my side, they stick out a little bit from the elbow, and that's just the shape of my bones, and it does indeed make lifting weights a little bit more challenging. So, without trying to make too many excuses, this is why I do what I do. And like I always say, you take where you are and you work from there. You, you make it work. So, here you see I'm really struggling with this. Lifting straight up like that. And I'm doing something really dangerous right now. This is unstable. These are free weights. And they're, it's too heavy for me. And I realize it, and I put them down. Okay. <laughs> So now we're going to get set up for some bench press. And please everyone join me in a short prayer of gratitude that this is actually a flattering angle. Alright, so 20 pounds in each arm, doing some bench press. Pretty easy. Making sure not to um, give myself too much weight. There's not too huge of an arch in my back. I'm not struggling. My shoulders are really safe. I have good shoulder integrity here. And that's what's most important when you're lifting free weights is making sure that you have good integrity, good stability through your shoulders. Because I'll, I will say it so many times until people get it. If you lift weights irresponsibly, especially free weights, you are going to rip something in your shoulder. 
and that requires surgery, and that surgery is not going to put you back the way you were, it's going to be bad. Okay? It's painful. It will affect you the rest of your life. Be smart when you lift weights, please. Okay. I trust that you get it. And when you're done, you got to be careful how you put those weights down, too. Take it nice and slow. All right. And then a little stretch. Stretch out my pecs because they just got worked out. Stretch out the wrists and the hands. Procrastinate doing the next set. And up we go. Oh, liposuction. No, I don't mean it. Okay, some more... Weighted squats. This time, when I come up, I'm going to right back behind me. The little butt squeeze. Little extra butt squeeze. Again, when I'm doing squats, stability and knee health are the most important parts of what I'm thinking about. It's not about how much weight I can lift. It's not about how good of a burn I can get. It's about do my knees feel okay? Do my hips feel okay? Am I okay? <laughs> and if I am, then we can keep going. Okay, we're gonna do some more of that glute medius and minimus work whilst I call local plastic surgeons. I'm kidding. I just have to say it. Got to discharge that energy. <laughs> okay. And using the wobbly table to stabilize myself. Not incredibly effective. And again, if I were at the gym, I would attach uh, to the pulley machine, and I would attach the pulley to my ankle, and then I would flare out with weight coming from there. Okay, and switch to the other side. There we go, we'll get a great view of the other part of myself that has caused me lots of strife over the years. That great upper boob armpit fat. Oh yes. It's part of me. It's, I don't think it's ever going to change now. So I might as well learn to love it, learn to accept it. Love my body anyway. All right, getting a good sweat. Here it's important to have um, a nice soft bend in your knees, nice soft bend in your ankles and hips as well, so that everything is moving fluid. Okay. Now we're doing some of this. I actually have no idea what this is called. I don't, I don't know much about weightlifting. I just do it. And I try to do it smart. And something else I've noticed as I've been lifting weights more is that if I lift a weight that is too heavy for me, I end up not getting as good of a workout because if it's too heavy, then only the big bulky muscles that are capable of lifting that kind of weight are activated. If it's too heavy for the smaller supporting muscles, they will not be active when you're lifting because it's, it's dangerous for them. If they overstrain, they could rip or tear, or the tendon could separate from the periosteum. So I found that I actually get better workouts when I use slightly lighter weights than is my maximum. And yes, you are incredibly correct if you assume that that means that I do not make as many strength gains as I possibly could. That is very true. However, as I've said a few times in this video, and will reiterate, like it's not just about the strength gains, it's not just about how much you can lift, how strong you can get, blah blah blah. For me, it's about longevity and safety and being comfortable in my body for the rest of my life. And all done. So, it's also very important to stay hydrated. As you can see, I'm sweating. And as you'll be able to see over the next several minutes, the sweat patches slowly engulf anything that's left that's dry on me. I love it. Okay, so we're doing some more deadlifts. 
Again, super flat back, really pushing my butt out behind me and then using the glutes to pull myself up. This is also really tough on my hamstrings. My hamstrings always feel shredded for several days after. I'm working on it. Hopefully it'll start improving more and more. And doing, oh, I think I do between like 10 and 15 deadlifts at a time. It never feels that difficult while I'm doing it. Just after. Okay. I think that's going to be about it for today. During this video, when I edit it, I'm going to speed up through the times that I'm just standing there breathing. But um, let's see here. We're at 37 minutes right now. So it's 37 minutes, including like a little bit of stretching, changing out the weights and stuff. And if I was at the gym, I probably would have gone for like an hour, but I also would have had some more variability as far as the machines that I was using and, and exercises that I was doing. But if I was at the gym, I would also have to be waiting on, you know, machines and waiting for people to get off machines and blah, blah, blah. Those are just some of the moves I do. A lot of the times I vary the moves I do. So like instead of a bunch of squats, I'll do more lunges or something like that just to um, save my knees from getting too worn out because I do have pretty sensitive knees. And then I might do some more stuff on the ground. And I didn't do abs today. I guess I could put a beach towel down and, you know, flop around on the floor while I'm sweaty, but I don't feel like it right now. Okay, bye.